you might have noticed um, on the dashboard these date range drop downs. Well, this this one's a date range drop down. It's the same as in the in the sidebar. You can select, say, the last 14 days, and you'll see you'll see the chart here change its date range, which is a really really nifty <laughs> feature. Not have not that I've ever said nifty in my life, but I love these date range drop downs. Um, they and I know that people who've used data data studio dashboards that are built really appreciate having this type of flexibility there. Um, there's another type of of filter that you can set up in data studio, and it's called a control filter, um, and it basically allows you to select one dimension and have that filtered to control your reporting. So for example, these are all the Twitter usernames, um, Twitter usernames that we have in our Twitter data. So if I hit this um, refresh button, it'll pull data for all usernames. But what if I just wanna look at one of them? Say if I, want, I just wanna look at Supermetrics tweets, their total tweet counts. Or if I want to look at Supermetrics and Zapier, I can do that. So this is called a control filter. It allows you to filter by one of your dimensions that you've set up. And this is just a date filter. And let's kind of go through now how we can set these up and how we can apply them to all of the charts that are in our report. So first, let's delete the filters that we have now and just start start fresh. You'll see that changed our charts here. First, let's put in a date range filter. So if you see this date range icon to the far right of the menu, and then same as a chart, you just drag and drop. And it automatically will will populate for you. Um, and to select a default, let's select a default of the last seven days, just so that this will automatically be populated without people having to go in and select a range every time. And the only thing you need to do to have this apply is make sure that your charts are set to default date range auto, and that will automatically apply whatever date range is selected in this date range filter. So the control filters, the, I guess they're called filter controls, are on the far right, and they're a little bit more complicated, but more or less the same idea. So the first thing you do for a filter control, and you'll see this will look a little bit goofy for now, you select what data source you want to filter. This is why it's so important if you want to have filters or these kind of controls to have all of your data in one data source. So like in this case, one, all of our Twitter data in one tab so that you can filter it later on. So you select your data source. In this case, it's daily activity. It automatically um, recognizes that. Our date range dimension, because we only want to be able to select usernames, for example, that had tweets within the date range we'd selected. So we'll use that same date range, date. And then for the actual filter, you select which dimension you want to use. You could use date or description, but in our case, username is what we want to filter by. We want to filter tweets from only specific handles. Um, and metri for metric here, all this controls is what displays next to the, the filter. So you could say like followers there. Um, and sh yeah, you show those values to, you could not show them, doesn't really matter just if it's helpful to you or not. So the important, the thing that I love to do with these control filters is actually in styling, you can select expandable and that will make a drop down instead of making this, um, you know, this big checkbox. You could have this check. I know you can't see that very well. You can have a big checkbox here, but I've always found that it's cleaner to have it set to expandable and use the actual drop down functionality. So if we now view this, uh, actually I forgot one really important thing um, with these filter controls. If we want this to apply to this chart, what we have to do is we have to select them together, right click and select group. That will link the, the control filter and the chart itself. 
and we'll select in that group we're using this data source and this date range dimension. Same, same settings. So now if we now view this, we can see um, if we want to view only Zapier, if we want to layer in Google Analytics or other tweets, other users, this um, this dropdown is now active. We can reset it to view everyone's data. And similarly for our time dimension, we can set this to be last 14 days, whatever it is, and that will change the charts around. So in my opinion, um, once I learned how to do these date range dropdowns and these control filters, it completely changed kind of the complexity of stuff that I can do in Data Studio. So hope you enjoy it.